All right, today I'm going to show how to clean the EGR valve on the OM642 diesel engine. Uh, so if it's a warranty job for us, um, we have to use this, uh, it's called Tunap, um, it's a carbon remover, comes with a brush on it and stuff like that. Um, if it's a customer pay one, we like to do a much more effective method in our opinion, um, which is using caustic soda. Um, so this is caustic soda, we buy it by the pound from our local chemical distributor. Um, as you can see, this has a lot of use. It's got a little bit of water on the beads that's made it clump up a little bit, but overall the point is the same. This stuff is really, if it gets on your skin, the dust and stuff makes you itch pretty bad. Um, the fumes are very harsh, so I always do it with this e uh, exhaust fan here, um, which pulls the fumes outside. Uh, this is a brake fluid container. Steel, not aluminum. You don't want to use an aluminum container like a pop can for that stuff, as it will eat the pop can. Um, right now, just for fun, I have my my thermometer mounted to the bottom of this can um, to see what the temperature is with just hot water, warm water. It's not even hot, um, and then what the temperature ends up being after adding the caustic soda to it. Um, I'm going to do the caustic soda method today. I don't really prefer this method, not only is it messier, it's harder, it takes a lot longer. Um, but again, on warranty jobs we have to use this stuff for it to be covered under warranty. Um, both methods are effective. You need a new EGR gasket. The bolts are reusable. I did kind of get started on this and found out that it is stuck in there pretty good, so I'm also going to be showing how to get a stuck EGR valve out. So. Um, need those. This is a torque wrench. Um, the EGR gets torqued to 12 newton meters. You need an 8 millimeter. I have an 8 millimeter magnetic. This ex quick lock extension, you could use a ratchet and an extension. Um, so first thing you'll do is get the hose clamps off of the coolant hoses to the EGR valve. These extended cable type pliers are amazing since you can just squeeze the clamp and uh, they ratchet into place so now the now that's locked into place like that so get that off get this one off eight millimeter for the filler neck take your filler neck off Pull your oil cap off of the filler neck and get it back on the cylinder head so you don't um, contaminate. Go ahead and unlock this connector. Little flathead screwdriver works best for me. And then you can get that connector off. Just set that out of the way. Eight millimeter or E10. For these bolts, four of them. One. Like I said, I already started this, and then I was like, eh, I should record this and get a how-to on it. So it could be beneficial, so I didn't have those tightened in all the way. Um, and like I said, this EGR valve doesn't want to come out. Like I have a small wiggle, but not enough to get it to come up, and requiring a lot more effort than I want to deal with right now. So, T30 security bit. Take out these. Be careful with this. You don't want to move the EGR valve um, as you are releasing 
what's securing the motor to the EGR valve. Um, so, once you have these out, don't pull up on the motor at all. This is where these come in handy. Um, they are longer by a good, more, good bit than the ones that tie the EGR valve down. And you'll thread these into the where the security bit T30s came out of. So you'll run those down to where they touch. And then you'll just work those down evenly. A little at a time. Don't do don't do one more than the other too much. That might be enough to get it out. Not quite. This definitely makes for light work on a stuck EGR. Hopefully that demonstrated well. So now before going any further, take these out and get your T30s back in. And these also get torqued to 12 newton meters. That's one reason I like using this, is because this torque wrench is actually made for these. As you can see, it's not very tight. You could torque them down after getting the ETR valve back in place. Okay, so as you can see, the valve is out. I like to leave the coolant hoses up or hooked up to this point. Get rid of dust and dirt. I like to kind of put that over there as a little dust shield, prevent anything from going down into the intake as it does go straight to the uh, intake, intake manifold, stuff like that. So I also have Oh, it's right here. This custom-made little coolant catch. You don't lose a lot of coolant, but this makes a for a much nicer mess-free removal. So I'll just get it over like this. Usually the coolant hoses aren't too stuck on there. Now we have the EGR valve out. Let's see if we can get a good view of what's going on with this one see how it's sticking like that in this vehicle in particular it's causing a like partial throttle uh, low speed surge um, it feels like uh, most people often describe it as a hard shift when in reality it has nothing to do with shifting at all um, so now that we have the valve out this is where the magic happens with the caustic soda um, you also want a nylon brush for this. So I take this little little bolt here to just hold the blades open. Go get a nylon brush. There we are. So nylon brush. Um, I have a bucket of clean water, cleanish water here, just plain water with a previous EGR cleaning in it. Um, so take the caustic soda. Use a screwdriver to stir. It's a, a ghetto little custom scooper we got here. Put the caustic soda in there. You can already see the temperature skyrocketing. See the temperature going up quite a bit. This does end up foaming over, which is why I have this here. Um, now we'll take the EGR and see if we can... The inside doesn't look too bad, but it's definitely dirty enough to cause those blades to stick. You'll see it start foaming up.
And the, like I said, the little bit of smoke that comes off the vapor is really harsh. It makes you cough pretty bad. Temperature is actually going down. It's kind of surprising. See all the carbon, that water was clean. Doesn't take long before scrubbing it or anything. I always rinse off the caustic soda because it does splash a little. And uh, like I said, it makes your arms, the skin on your arms sting a little. So, take the brush. Avoid getting any stuff down in the coolant ports. You could block those off if you want. I've never had an issue with it. Inside there is pretty clean. Now, go do a final cleanup. It's just a little bit of brake cleaner, it kind of eliminates the water. As you can see, there you got good spring back. Alright, so I ended up having to cut it a little short last night, um, but back at it now. Um, yeah, as you can see, good spring back. Closes all the way. So, that'll have a much better operation now um, than before. So we'll go ahead and get the new gasket on. I like to stick the bolts through. So I'm putting it back in and just make sure the connector goes that direction. As you can see the ceiling surface portion is still nice and clean. Be able to just go ahead and drop this valve back in. Well, as mentioned, 12 newton meters. Reconnect the electrical. <laughs> EGR portion is done. Coolant. You want to top that off just a little. Even though we really didn't lose much at all. A little above max. That way. Go down when the engine runs and these hoses fill back up in the EGR valve. Always make sure you get this back on um, tight, otherwise you'll have an oil leak all down the side of your cylinder head. You can kind of feel 
when it goes on right. And there you have it. That's how you <coughs> clean the EGR valve on the OM642 diesel engine in the Mercedes Sprinter. Um, go ahead and give the video a like if you enjoyed this content. Uh, subscribe to my channel and comment any suggestions you have down below.